Those over the age of 50 are at higher risk of having a more severe case of COVID-19, but that doesn't mean that young adults are not vulnerable. In fact, the virus can cause long-term effects in younger age groups. With more on that, I want to bring in CTV's medical specialist, Dr. Marla Shapiro. Good morning, Dr. Marla. Good to see you today. So, first of all, let's talk about the symptoms of COVID-19 because they have changed and grown over these past few months. So this particular study published in um, the MMWR, which is the morbidity weekly report that comes out of the United States, looked at individuals who were COVID positive, not requiring hospitalization, isolating at home, quarantining at home, and what their outcome is. And the persistent symptoms of fatigue, cough, headache, persisting in well over 60 to 70% of individuals in all age groups, noting that this is one of the most prevalent things that really impacts on their ability to get back to work, quality of life, cognition. So a lingering outcome, if you will. Okay, and would those also have been the symptoms that would present when they first discovered that they had COVID-19 and they've just persisted throughout? Yes. So typically the presenting symptoms that drive people either because they know that they've had a contact or they have a fever and a cough and a flu-like illness that drives them in to be screened. And in those who are screened, not ill enough to come into hospital, able to be treated at home with a tincture of time, these are the types of symptoms. Obviously, these are different than those who end up in the ICU with severe respiratory distress. We're talking about that group of people, you know, when we talk about, well, the vast majority do well with this disease. This is the so-called doing well with the disease and the outcome they experienced. Wow. Okay. So how long can it take to recover from the virus based on age? Okay, so whereas overall about two thirds said, well, by two weeks I felt okay, there was a group of people based on age that by two weeks, even three weeks, they were still experiencing these symptoms. And the older you were, a little bit more in terms of the percentage. So even those between the ages of 18 to 34, at least 25% noted that at week three, they were still having these ongoing symptoms. In the 35 to 49 year old group, you can see that it's almost a third. And as we get to those over the age of 50, almost half of those at week three are still experiencing these symptoms. But if you look at that age group between 18 to 49, it's a substantive number of individuals who at week three are still feeling like they're not at their game. They're not able to go back to work. It impacts on education, impacts on cognition, impacts on memory, impacts on the ability to go back to carrying on life as it was before. And I've got a number of these patients in my own practice that say, you know, I'm feeling better. I'm not feeling as well, as unwell as when I was diagnosed, but I'm just not myself. Wow. Now, a lot of people look at COVID-19 as an illness for older Canadians. Um, do we need to be more thoughtful? And do the younger people need to be more thoughtful and cautious right now, Dr. Marla? I think we're seeing that as, as different parts of the country, different, different countries open up. You can see that the number of infections are beginning to shift downward. We're seeing a lot of individuals under the age of 40 related to gathering in bars, you know, close social gatherings. We had this incident over the weekend in Ontario where 200 people were socializing, not getting the message that although our numbers have come down, they can come right back up. We're seeing that happen in Alberta now. The closer that we get, the more we ignore these regulations and these rules that are being suggested about social distancing and masking, the more we're at risk. And yes, for younger individuals, while we don't see the mortality rates that we see with older individuals, we see significant illness that is continuing on. Nothing that I think anybody wants to put them in harm's way for. Dr. Marla, thank you. Appreciate that.